What is going on, everybody? I go by the name of Curry, and I want to thank you guys for joining me here today on Sneaker Fetish. 2001 was a good year, and if you were around sneakers around 2001, you remember a special three-pack of Nike Dunk Lows that dropped exclusively over in Japan that was called the Ugly Duckling Pack. Today, we're taking a look at one of those sneakers that were part of that pack. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. Boom. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Nike Dunk Low Veneer. This is history right here. This again is yet another piece of sneaker history that Nike has so graciously given to us that in my opinion, I don't know if a lot of people really appreciate them the way that they should. So we're gonna take a look at the sneaker and then after we take a look at the sneaker a little bit more in depth, we're gonna break down kind of the history of this sneaker, why Nike is so incredible at what they do these days and why I think that this sneaker is actually selling below what it really should be. Let's get into it. All right guys, now starting with the upper of the sneaker here, this is a regular Nike Dunk Low, not an SB. Don't expect the fat tongue on these or anything like that. But this one is really, really special mainly because of the materials. Let's start with the grain on this sneaker here now all the materials first of all are the same but the green you see it's a really nice green suede material this really thick suede material wrapping around the back of the sneaker down the eyelids down the mud guards and around the toe box now i get this really nice thick suede swoosh on the lateral and medial side of the sneaker as well taking a top down look at the shoe here you see a better view of the vamp here the toe box that really nice brown suede and those purple laces that match the purple on the outsole and the purple on the swoosh let's talk about the tongue here really nice thin tongue here this is not a fat tongue nike dunk this is a thin tongue nike dunk really nice green tag as well with that offset purple nike swoosh on the tongue tag i also really like that lighter green kind of slime colored mesh inside of the sneaker as well around the sock liner and around the heel i thought that was a really really nice touch moving around to the back of the sneaker classic dunk low with the green nike stitched in the back of the heel you got that nice dunk outsole here in purple to match the laces the swoosh and that tongue tag and on the insole of the shoe you have the green insole offset with the nike swoosh emblem on the heel and that's pretty much it when it comes to the veneer dunk now let's break down first of all what exactly veneer is because a lot of people call these the veneers but i don't even know if you guys really know what veneer actually is veneer in this case because the veneer color here is the brown color referenced in this sneaker veneer actually is a thin sheet of wood that actually is used as a cheap alternative to hardwood when you're doing things like construction building certain items like dressers and desks and things like that basically what a lot of people do is instead of using real hardwood that's heavier but more expensive a lot of people would use a sheet of very very thin wood and they will place it over a much cheaper material to give the illusion that it's actually a much more expensive looking wood than it really is that's called a veneer that sheet is called a veneer another place where you may have heard that term is in veneer teeth and basically what veneers are in teeth are this really strong sheet that you place over your teeth that make your teeth look perfect so a lot of your favorite rappers and celebrities out here that look like they have perfect teeth a lot of them got veneers done on their teeth and it's very expensive but still it kind of gives that illusion that the teeth look perfect even though they really aren't now as i mentioned the veneer originally debuted as a really interesting looking colorway as a part of a trio of really interesting looking colorways that was known as the ugly duckling pack now the ugly duckling pack was an exclusive release in japan back in 2001 when dunks were hot and i mean they were hot but they were hot to the dunk consumer to the skateboard culture they weren't as big nearly as big as they are now but the interesting thing about it is that as the dunk got bigger in popularity a lot of these original colorways I don't know, it just seems like they didn't get as much love or as much respect as they should have. Maybe if Travis Scott wears a pair of veneers one day, then the price will start to jump up on them. But these really take me back to a time when dunks were really about the cult-like following that they had. Not only that, but this sneaker really reminds me of a time when Nike was doing a great job of reimagining and re-envisioning a lot of its sneakers because they were really based on some revolutionary molds and tooling. I mean, the flat bottom that was originally intended for basketball use as the Nike Dunk was originally a basketball shoe and then of course that same sole translated onto the air jordan one to see that reimagined into a skate shoe and nike leaning all the way into that to build out an entire new skateboarding division of nike just speaks to how much foresight nike had into how well nike adapted and shifted to changes in the culture it's pretty amazing to see actually but how amazing is it in 2020 that people are still chomping at the bit to get their hands on these classic designs these classic silhouettes these classic materials i mean again this is pretty much the same sneaker for 
all intents and purposes that dropped back in 2001. And here we are, people are paying double and over double the price for this sneaker. It says a lot. Now, even with these sneakers selling for around $200 to $250, if you want my opinion for what these sneakers represent and for the history that these sneakers have in them, I don't think that's enough. I think that this sneaker really is worth three to $400 plus. You look at the original version, and if you find the 2001 version of the Veneer Dunk Low, that sneaker is gonna run you somewhere between $1,300 and $1,500 right now. So if you're able to get yourself a pair of these for $200 to $250, you better buy them quick because whoever's selling them to you may or may not really understand how much history is in this sneaker, but that lends itself to a bigger point and it goes beyond the dunks. I think that the bigger point here is what we talk about a lot. This sneaker really represents the fact that this is a different generation of sneakerhead in 2020. And unfortunately to me, it feels like this generation of sneakerhead that doesn't really have that emotional tie to these sneakers back in 2001 and, and these early sneakers, they just really don't understand. So it's hard for them to connect with a sneaker like this, whereas somebody that was really big in the skate culture, somebody that was around back in those days and saw the sneaker originally come out, you could search Nike Dunk Low Veneer 2001 on YouTube right now and you'll find some really dope videos from some people that unfortunately are not really making sneaker videos anymore talking about the OG version of the sneaker. It was a different time then. But I also understand that while Nike is trying to bridge the gap between old and new, sometimes that may get lost with people. But it's not getting lost too, too much because at least Nike was smart enough to release this sneaker in very limited quantities. So that in itself, just the exclusive and limited nature of the sneaker naturally drove up a little bit of hype on them. So Nike brought this out with exclusive access. Hopefully you guys were able to get your pair off of exclusive access. I was not because I never really get exclusive access to much of anything out here. Or if you were lucky enough to grab these off of the regular sneakers drop or from one of your local skate shops, these were a really, really good sneaker to pick up. If you're not really feeling the Donatello from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle vibes, that's okay. It's okay not to really be feeling these sneakers. The colors are a bit ostentatious. They're a little bit different. But like I said, I think that this is more of a conversation piece and a piece of history, more so than just a sneaker that you throw on with a bunch of different fits. But but to each his own. Sneakers are what they are to you. So just because I'm talking about the history of these and what I personally see in this sneaker doesn't mean that the sneaker is going to be the same thing to you. That being said, that's pretty much all that I have to say about these. I just wanted to give you guys a quick look, talk about them a little bit. Now it's time for you guys to sound off down in the comments and let me know what you guys think about the 2020 Nike Dunk Low Veneer. Are these ones that were on your must cop list? Are you trying to pick yourself up a pair or were these a hard pass for you? Let me know down below. On top of that, are you guys looking forward to the ceramics that are getting ready to come out soon or did you get your hands on the plum dunk lows because remember those were the other two colors that were in that ugly duckling pack the plums we already got the veneers we have now and the ceramics are on the way soon are you trying to complete the trifecta or are these just not really for you whatever you decide while you're commenting down in the comments make sure that you click on that subscribe button so we can welcome you into the sneaker fetish family to make sure you don't miss out on any more heat that comes through like these because i guarantee you i got a lot more heat on the way. As always, I want to thank you guys for joining me here today on Sneaker Fetish, taking a look at these with me, unboxing them with me for a couple of minutes. I go by the name of Kari. This is the Nike Dunk Low Veneer for 2020. And until next time, I'm out.